Hello, everyone, and welcome to Chapter 4, uh, Lesson 1. We're going to be uh, learning about rational numbers, okay? So first, we, we need to know what a rational number is. What does that mean? And in the Lesson 1, we're going to look at terminating and repeating decimals, okay? So we're going to work with decimals. But uh, you can go ahead and turn to page 263. But uh, right now, I want to explore, before we get started working on that, what is a rational number? Okay, so take a look at this graph that I pulled from another textbook. We have natural numbers. When you first started counting, when you were really little and you were in kindergarten, and you learned to count one, two, three, or like when, you, when you're counting the pencils in your pencil case, those are natural numbers. You start at one, right? You start by counting one, two, three, the number of objects you have, right? Those are natural numbers. Then we included zero. Now zero is the absence of, uh, of a number. Zero means none right? But zero is also a placeholder. So first we start with natural numbers, okay? Natural numbers are on their own, and then we have whole numbers. Whole number includes natural numbers and the number zero. Then we have integers. Integers includes zero and natural numbers plus negative numbers. These are all integers, this entire circle, okay? And then we have rational numbers. Rational numbers are natural numbers, they're whole numbers, they're also negative, they're, but they're also mixed numbers, decimals, fractions, or repeating decimals with bar notation. Okay, so rational numbers are all of these, are any number, okay, including fractions of a number. Okay, so now we can get started. If you go ahead and turn to page 263, lesson one, terminating and repeating decimals. Well, let's start with what is, what is it terminating and repeating? Well, terminating, if you know the word terminate, means to end, right? And repeating, obviously, to uh, do over, okay? To repeat again. Any fraction can be expressed as a decimal by dividing the numerator by the denominator. So what they mean by that is if you have um, one over two, you simply just divide the 1 divided by 2. So let's say I have 1 over 2, that's a fraction. I simply just divide the 1 divided by 2, and that's going to give me a decimal, and you know that that will be 0 decimal 5, right? So that's what they're saying here. Any fraction can be expressed as a decimal by dividing the numerator by the denominator, okay? As you see right there. The decimal form of a fraction is called a repeating decimal. Repeating decimals can be represented using bar notation. In a bar notation, a bar is drawn over the digit or digits that repeat. For example, 33333 and it continues, put dot dot dot, it continues forever. Okay? We can just simply stop at the first digit and put a bar. Now, if it's the 12 that is repeating, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, we do both of them, 1, 2. Got it? You just put the number over the ones that repeat. Over here, we're going to have 3A5 repeating, and then again, uh, oh, wait a minute, 3, 8, 5, 8, 5, 8, 5. So only the 8, 5, not the 3. Only the 8, 5 is repeating. You can see that the bar notation is over the 8, 5. So that is what we mean by bar notation. It expresses that the number will continue to repeat itself. Okay? And then we have, if the repeating digit is 0, a decimal is a terminating decimal, meaning it ends. It means we don't have to write a bunch of zeros. We just, we don't write it like this. We don't write a bar notation over the 0. We just write it as 0 decimal two five. Okay, that's a period there, by the, by the way. Match each repeating decimal to the correct bar notation. Okay, let's see. We have 1111. Yeah, there we go. Okay, 61111. Only the ones repeat. So, there we go. And here, the 616161 repeats. There we go. Okay, I hope that makes sense for you. Okay, let's take a look at a real world link. Jamie had, to, had two hits on her first nine times at bat. To find her batting average, she divided two by nine. Yeah, she got two out of nine, right? Two out of nine, so you divide the numerator by the denominator. Now here's a little trick I wanna teach you. Anytime you divide a number divided by nine, you're going to get this number bar notation. So really, it's going to look like this. Zero decimal two, and the two is going to repeat. Two, 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 indefinitely, so that's why I said two bar notation. Okay, and there it is. Okay, you know that the number is going to continue forever because they use the dot, 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 dot. So how do you write it uh, using a bar notation? Zero decimal two bar notation. Okay, round zero decimal two, 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 two to the nearest thousandths. 
So we have ten, hundred, thousands. Now, do I go up to a three? No. You leave it at a two because the number is less than five. So it's zero decimal two, two, two. As a key answer, please draw a face on the baseball. I drew my face a little sad with the tear because look at it. It got ripped apart. On page 264, we're going to practice writing fractions as decimal. Our decimal system is based on powers of 10, such as tenth, hundredth, thousandth. Well, you know that we write one tenth, we write one hundredth, we write one thousandth. If the denominator of a fraction is a power of 10, you can use place value to write the fraction as a decimal. For example, 7 tenths. 7 over 10, 7 in the tenth place. This is how you actually say the number, 7 tenths, right? 19 hundredths. Well, the way we would write 19 hundredths, we write 19 hundredths. 19 out of 100, right? 19 hundredths. And then you would write it as 19 in the hundredth place. You have to know place value to uh, be able to do this. 105, 105 thousandths. 105 thousandths. 105 out of a thousand. Okay? So we would write it as in the thousands place, zero decimal, one in the tens place, zero in the hundredth place, and five in the thousands place. Zero decimal, one, 105 thousandths. Let's look at example one and two. Example one is quite simple. It's 74 hundredth. So it's 74 in the hundredth place. Quite simple, 74, and you write it in the hundredth place, 10, hundredth, right? I hope you can see that, sorry. Sometimes I forget to zoom in. So yeah, you have the tenth and the hundredth, so 74 hundredth, it's zero decimal seven four. Simple, right? But what about when it's not out of a hundred? Like seven tenths, I mean seven twentieths. Well, you can make it out of a hundred. Don't forget, whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. What do I do to the twenty to make it a hundred? Twenty times five is a hundred, do the same to the top. 7 times 5 is 35. So now you have 35 hundredth, right? And there it is. 35 in the hundredth place. Easy? Okay. What about here when it's a mixed number? Same thing. You can change it to an improper fraction, okay? Or just separate it. Work with the 5, oh, as you see here, the 5 separately from the fraction, okay? Convert the fraction, 3 quarters, to a decimal, okay, the same way. You know that 3 over 4, you multiply it by uh, 25, and that gives you 100, right? And then you multiply the top by 25 as well. You do the same thing to the bottom, uh, whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top, and that's 75. So then you have 7,500, and there it is, 7,500, right? And then you put it right back together, and you have 5 decimal 75. That's another way to do it. Okay, let's try the examples. I mean the practice questions. Okay, three tenths. Simple, right? We have three in the tenth place. Here, I have to multiply, to change it to 100, so I have to multiply 25 times 4. It's going to give me 100. So I do the same to the top, and I get 4. 3 times 4, and I get 12. So I get 12 hundredths. So 12 hundredths is going to be 0 decimal 1, 2. 12 hundredths. Negative. Here we go, we're working with rational numbers, right? So, and rational numbers includes integers. Let's separate them, boys and girls, separate them. Okay, so now I, I know I'm going to have 6, it's a negative 6, right? And a half can be written as decimal 5, right? And there you have it. On example 4, you'll notice that we have 3 eighths. Well, we can't convert an 8 to 100, unfortunately. That you can't multiply, unless you multiply 8 times 12.5. You could do that, and then you multiply... Uh, the 3 times 12.5, and that's the number you'll get in the hundredth place. You'll, you'll notice that if you multiply 3 times 12.5, you're going to get 37.5, uh, but you want to write it in the uh, hundredth place, really. Uh, here it's written in the thousandth place. So what I, what I wanted to tell you is that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is just simply divide the numerator by the denominator, as you see. So they took the numerator and they divided it by 8, divided by the denominator. And you go ahead and just put your decimal at the top as we practiced before dividing decimals. And then you divide right through and you'll notice that you get 0 decimal 375. Okay, example 5, you keep the negative, don't forget. Okay, you see the negative is there, you keep the negative with you. And it's 1 40th. Again, you can't really, unless you multiply it by 2.5, you're not going to get this in 200. Multiply this by 2.5, right? 
right? Then how do you know where it goes? That's the hard part. So again, you have to divide 1 divided by 40. 1 divided by 40. And you go ahead, and it works right down to 0 decimal 0 to 5, or 25 thousandths. And as I mentioned earlier, anything over 9 is going to be this number, the numerator, uh, bar notation. Anything that you divide by 9 will be that number bar notation. You can see 7 divided by 9 is going to be 0 decimal 7 bar notation. Okay, let's try the three examples at the bottom, the three practice questions. Remember that we can, uh, for these ones, we simply divide the numerator by the denominator, as you see right there. And for the mixed numbers, we separate the whole number from the fraction, and we solve the fraction to convert it as a decimal, and then we add them back together. Okay, so let's try... Uh, negative 7 eighths. So I'm going to go ahead and divide 7 divided by 8. Now don't forget that we have to uh, include the negative. Okay, so now I have 7 divided by 8. There are no 8's here. So clearly it's going to be a decimal, right? So um, there are none, so I put a 0 there and I put my decimal, okay? And now this converts to 70. So how many 8's do I have in 70? 8 times 8 is 64. 6, right, bring down another 0, 8 times 7 is 56, I have 4, I bring down another 0, and then 8 times 5 is 40, and now I have 0, I'm done. So it's um, 875 thousandths, okay? Go ahead and try that with F on your own, exactly the same way I just did it. Let me do E, and you can go ahead and do uh, G on your own. So E, I'm going to separate the 2 plus the 1 eighth. Okay, and 1 eighth, I'm going to go ahead and just do the same way. I have 1 divided by 8, 0, decimal, 2. Oh, I'm sorry, what did I do there? It's not 2, it is only one of them. There's only 1 eighth there, 1. Now I have 2, bring down a 0. Now I have 2. And I have 16, and 4, bring down a 0, 40, and that's 5. You know, I have, it's going to be 40 down here, subtract a 0. Okay, and there's my answer, um, 0, decimal, 1, 2, 5. Okay, go ahead and try G the same way. I will be putting a star right there to remind myself that you, you're going to be doing those two on your own. Uh, please put your stars on there as well for me. Those are key answers. Okay, and finally, page 266, uh, we have example 7. Write decimals as fraction. Every terminating decimal can be written as a fraction with a denominator of 10, 100, 1,000, or a greater power of 10. Use the place value to, let's say, I don't even have to read that. Let's just say you have um, 0 decimal 0.15. You know it's 15 in the hundredth place. So you write 15 hundredth, right? But then you have to simplify this. And they're both divisible by 5. How many 5's do you have here and how many 5's do you have here? Well, on the top you have 3 of them, and on the bottom you have 20 of them. And this is how you turn 0 decimal 1, 5 into a fraction, 3 or 20th. Okay? We'll go over that in class as well. Oh, wow, I didn't realize that they used the exact same example here. Oops. Well, there, I, I was able to explain it. Because the video is getting a little long, I would like you to do these on your own. Convert the molly fish, 0 decimal 2, the guppy fish, and the angel fish. Convert them right there into fractions. Okay? Please leave the guided practice for class so we can do it together. But complete the independent practice on your own and we'll check it in class. Alright everyone, see you in class.